What's up, everybody? Hey, this message comes at you as a, just an encouragement of compassion um, and, and sending your kids off to school every single morning, teaching them compassion for others and uh, to not just look up for themselves, but to look at the, uh, the underdogs, the ignored and the overlooked. Uh, right now, suicides at an all-time high. Um, depression, loneliness, insecurity, identity crisis. It's, it's, it's getting worse every single day. And um, the things that I'm hearing from my kids, I just could not say something. So I hate to say this, but unfortunately, there's a lot of parents not having the compassion talk with their kids. Because from what I'm gathering from my kids, there's hardly any compassion. So why is it that our kids are going to school and even their best friends are bullying them? And, and I honestly, I think it comes down to the TikTok and uh, the social media. Parents, your kids are living in a false reality in the TikTok. Ditch the phones, I'm sorry. Get rid of the phones, get rid of the TikTok. I am not preaching from a place of perfection. And uh, I'm not perfect parent by any means. And a lot of your parents are way better than I am. One thing I'm doing is not allowing my kids to have TikTok. And I see it when their friends come over, they're just engulfed in it. And it's the world they live in. And they don't even realize as they're watching this that 95% of the world, uh, kids in school today get one meal a day. And their parents live on less than $80 a week. But we're so engulfed in this deception right now and we're being discipled by these influencers and looking at people through a filter, that that's what our kids know. That if we're not spending time with our kids, teaching them compassion and teaching them empathy and real life, raw realness and sorrow and, and to lend a helping hand and to serve, we are dropping the ball. I think uh, a lot of us are parents are spending too much time scrolling on our phones and worrying about our own financial successes that we forget that every single day we have a new set of hours to glorify God and, and to serve others. Um, Jesus came into this world uh, to serve, not to be served, and gave his life as a ransom to many. So uh, we're called to perpetuate that excellence. If we're a Christian, we're called to to uh, basically, Jesus summed up the entire 10 commandments in these two things. Love God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. That's compassion. If we only had 24 hours left to live, if we truly like really dug into that and really thought that we only had 24 hours left to live and God said your your heavenly reward and your treasures are going to be based on compassion and how well you can love others and what you can do for others then I think we would all send our kids out to school with a whole new perspective um, some of the greatest people are the most quiet people, insecure people and they end up taking their own lives or they end up just not living their, a fulfilled life or re meeting their potential because of insecurities of others and it starts at home. Unfortunately, people end up with insecurities because of people's kids. Like the saying, like, oh, some people's kids. Well, it's true, some people's kids, including my kids. Um, we're, we're guilty of not sending our kids off with the, with the right perspective. So Ethan and I's prayer this morning was that he looked to the internal, looked to the heart. He did, that he's not looking at kids and his friends, the external, how cool their shoes are, how good they are at basketball, what their popularity ranking is, but rather like, what does their heart look like? And if we all just started looking at the heart, the heart posture of people, ultimately we can win this war that's raging with inside of us all right now. I think we all can agree there's some sort of funk going on in the atmosphere and things are changing by the daily. And I, and I got a little, just a little uh, news flash for you. It's not going away unless we do something about it. So if we expect for it to just uh, recalibrate itself and redirect itself to the good old days, it's not gonna happen. It starts at home. And ultimately it comes down to good marriages. Good marriages make good kids. Good marriages make good churches. Good marriages make good nations. Good marriages make good countries. And so marriage isn't for an act of selfishness. A lot of us get married so we go, okay, what can this, and I'm going on a rabbit trail here. What can this marriage offer me? Well, she's really good with finances. She's pretty. She'll give me something good to look at. She's really good at nurturing children. Uh, she makes my life better. I mean, that's what culture and society teaches us how to view marriage. But marriage 
is actually supposed to be an act of selflessness. When we look at the bride of Christ and, the, and, and how God views marriage and, the, and actually even the old Jewish culture and, and, and marriage is supposed to be selfless. It's supposed to be sacrificial. So we get our love first from God and God provides us the love that a lot of us are looking for in our marriages. And then our marriage, if it's got a lot of love in it, is just a bonus. But really marriage is supposed to be sacrificial. You've already got your love and your security. So when your husband or your wife's having an off day, you can be secure yourself and your joy isn't robbed from them. Or you're, or you're limited by how well they treat you. Because I tell you what, a lot of times our spouses don't treat us very well. And if, and if we take that out in the world, then we can't be good disciples and steward God's good day um, to others. So, so find your joy in the Lord. Um, he's good. And he can provide supernatural joy in ordinary and hard times. And so um, I guess what I'm getting at is it starts with the marriage. Make your marriage healthy as possible. You can see your man's relationship with God based on like his marriage, right? So men, you gotta, we gotta, there's a war of masculinity right now. We gotta man up. There's gotta be a rise of servant kings. Don't let your wives and the deceptions that they're following bring you down. The same with wives. A lot of you wives are leading your husbands right now and setting the spiritual thermostat. Now is the time that we must rise up, make our marriages strong and make our kids strong and teach our kids the truth. They're being, during these little indoctrination factories inside these public schools, learning the wrong things. We got to send them to school with truth and righteousness. Their blessings are not going to be based on how good they are at math. Their blessings are going to be by their character. The only thing we can take with us when we're gone is our character, right? And so, and it's not our light. We're just reflectors of God's good light, just like a bicycle reflector. If we've got mud on the ref reflector of our bicycle, a beam of light's not going to come off of it. But if we um, keep our hearts pure, keep our lives clean, then we can reflect God's good light to the rest of the world. And everybody wants to be in the light. No one wants to be in the darkness. That's universal among every single person. We might like the dark for a little bit, but ultimately we can't survive without light. We have to have light in order to, to live and actually have nutrients and, and, and good life. So the light just isn't scientific. It's not just the sun. The light we also need is, is God's light, his purity, his righteousness. Everything good that we have comes from up above. So we gotta partner with that and we gotta teach our kids that and raise our kids. Um, Cause there is a war going on right now and there is a battle for your children. Just so you know, there's something raging war inside of us all right now. And they're spending way too much time on their phones and they have way too much influence right now. Um, and so we've, we've uh, this is just encouragement. An encouragement for all of us parents, myself including, included, um, to uh, have conversations with our kids. Without, without communication, there's confusion, right? So our kids are confused right now. And, and so are we. All we gotta do is talk it through, get a good, um, just a circle of influence around you, good people, good friends that have positive mindsets and an upward trajectory. We wanna go upwards. And every single day is trying to bring us down. And we fall into temptations of money and prosperity. That's not what it's about. We have 24 hours right now, a new, a new chance every time we wake up, a new set of hours to glorify God, your creator the one that knows every hair in your head and that fearfully and wonderfully made you. God fearfully and wonderfully made you for good works. So before you were even born, he created you for good works and for a plan. So it's not about our potential, it's about our purpose. My potential with this business is I could, I could really make millions if I wanted to, but that's not my purpose. My purpose is to keep the business scaled down so I can be flexible for God's calling in any direction. And so I don't get caught up in the money and the material. Because I'll tell you this, Circumstances, people, and things do not provide purpose or happiness. Fulfillment of life a lot of times comes with a kind of a rough life, but it's still full. So we can have, we can have a fulfilled life with trials and tribulations because God is our ultimate fulfillment. The Bible says it's like chasing after the wind. When we try to find our happiness um, in things and money, it's like trying to catch the wind. You can't do it. And there's been many, many, many prosperous people throughout history that spent their entire life with more riches than anybody. And at the end of their life, they felt like it was hollow, it was empty. And the one common denominator um, of their happiness was Jesus. Finding our contentment within our 24 hours. Um, it's not gonna be Bitcoin, it's not gonna be 401k, uh, it's not gonna be Apple stock. 
Our happiness will come from a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Hope this finds you well. God bless.